approaching to the stage where we'll be presenting the arguments. Before presenting, we need to understand how we need to prepare it. Okay. Now, arguments are actually based on the issues. So we need to understand and formulate issues. This step is actually not very relevant because sometimes issues are given already. So if issues are given already in the preposition, we need to understand them. So in order to form, uh, just ignore the spelling mistakes. Uh, it says in order to form issues, one must understand the issues in the proposition proposition first. This is what I said. If they're given, given in the proposition, don't waste your time. If they're not, you need to form them. Don't go and make numerous issues. This is very important. You need to keep in mind, keep them around four only maximum. There should be four minimum. It can be two. It can be three, but don't go on making five and six. Okay. Issues can be taken up from proposition itself or can be made by you also. This was something that I wanted to highlight, which is not very important. This is actually very important part. How you need to prepare your arguments. So a good argument has this particular structure. The, this you need to keep in mind what I just said in the arguments advance. So introduction, this is how you need to introduce starting with a quote. This is something which I found out many people do to make uh, a argument beautify, but I'm not completely in favor of starting an argument with a quote because to be honest, it found, I find it cheesy. I find it uh, over uh, intimidating. I find it that you are actually trying to hide something in your argument that you're starting with a quote. I'm not ready to listen to a quote in uh, an argument. So that is up to you. If you want to find it that it beautifies it, you can start with a quote or you can start with a legal maxim. Then introduce the issue and argument briefly. You need to introduce it briefly. And uh, okay, one thing I'm telling you about the argument with the issues. I'm not talking about how you need to present it. Presenting is what I'll be discussing later on. Okay, this is just the, how you need to form an argument. So you can introduce the issue. You can also introduce the law or the law point that is up to you. It is your chance to frame the issue. So this is an example that I said that this case is about the inherent inequality of segregated school system, which stamp a badge of inferiority upon minority children. Okay, so you can take these lines if it if you find them helpful. It is nothing just introduction i again repeat it should be maximum three lines okay just three lines or four lines it should be just a paragraph now comes your roadmap roadmap is something which is not a part of your memorial this is something you need to keep at uh, handy this is something which is only for your understanding roadmap means you need to bifurcate your arguments into issues and sub issues you need to interlink it okay so this is something which i made on my own this is the core of a moot code. So you see it, it starts from here that you formulate issues on the basis of these issues. You are making arguments. Okay. We are at this particular stage. Now in the arguments, you need to include facts and law. This is what I'm saying because introduction is this thing. Okay. When you are introducing facts and law, you need to also substantiate them, them with the cases. See how the interlinking is there. Cases, cases should be based on the proposition because if you go and find out cases out of the proposition, it would not make sense. So these cases should be based on the proposition and the proposition. Where do we need to find out? The proposition has the issues. So you see how the interlinking goes. And if you understand this interlinking, you will have a roadmap uh, there with you and you will not be able to uh, forget anything. Now comes your facts. So you see, we were, we are done with the introduction part. Okay. So if we see the, uh, roadmap again, we have formulated the issues we are doing in the, uh, we are going in the arguments part. So in the arguments part, we will now talk about facts and law. So this is second thing that we need to see our argument consists, considers, uh, consists of facts. So this is something which you need to see that, uh, there's a fact sheet that is given to you, which is a proposition. Now, very important thing is there. Every time you don't have to read out the facts to the judges, it is only going to waste your time because although you are, you'll say that we are only taking 30 seconds, sir, but those 30 seconds are also important, right? So if you're going like 
during the starting of the competition first second or third you may ask for the court that may i just uh, reiterate the fact recite the facts the judges would say yes but if you are going towards the end of the competition keep that in mind that judges would ask you not to reiterate the facts because they are also fed up of listening to the facts again and again so you just need to politely ask would the court care for a brief recitation of the facts if the judges say no skip it come to your argument so you only offer offer to reiterate facts if there is a legal significant error so if the appellant has misread a fact or misstated a fact point out that okay point that out and that would be going into your favor because that would make judge realize that you are aware you are attentive in the proceedings now comes your body of the arguments that i just mentioned in the memorial also divide issues and sub issues each sub issue should have the same structure now this is very important have a same structure for example if you are going for the fact law argument cases follow this structure only follow this particular sequence only don't go changing it in every sub issue okay the argument should only be constrained with what is written in the memorial so this is if you have written something in the memorial you need to only constrain constrain that that it means that what you are preparing for the oral arguments you need to just make it constrained what you have written in the memorial and not uh, apart from that reiterate the fact which supports your contention this is very important which you need to understand a fact from the moot preposition needs to be reiterated cite case laws citing of case laws is very important if you have written 10 case laws in memorial don't go and cite 10 case laws in the oral argument cite only the relevant case law and the relevant portion of it which actually makes your case strong and very important point just note it down if you are an appellant and you have said a case which is already written in the respondents memorial it is for the respondents don't cite that case okay don't cite that case until and unless it is actually making your point so what i'm saying is if a case xyz which you are going to rely on has already been relied has already been proved in his favor by the appellant or the petitioner don't reiterate that case because then court will grill you on that court will grill you on that in the sense that this particular case this guy has proved then how you are coming uh, taking it up he would grill you on that particular case and issue so that is what you are doing actually apne pairon pe kuladi marna so never ever कभी भी वो केस मत साइट करो जो ऑलरेडी साइट हो चुका है बाय ऑपोजिट पार्टी द सेम गोस फॉर एपलेंट आल्सो अपने रिबटल में उस केस को मत उठा के लाना जो रेस्पोंडेंट ने पहले ही बोल दिया है वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग एंड दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट यू नीड टू डू इट यू नीड टू पुट इट इन योर प्रैक्टिस कंटेंट्स ऑफ द ऑपोजिंग टीम्स के मेमो मेमो में जो ऑपोजिंग टीम के लिखा है उसको काउंटर करो और अपने ही आर्ग्यूमेंट्स में इंक्लूड करो Don't keep them for the rebuttal. बहुत लोग ये गलतियां करते हैं बोलते हैं हम तो अपना आर्ग्यूमेंट देंगे जो उसने गलत लिखा है वो रिबटल में लेंगे नहीं डोंट वेट फॉर रिबटल रिबटल के लिए यूल गेट मोर आर्ग्यूमेंट्स रिबटल के लिए यूल गेट आर्ग्यूमेंट्स फ्रॉम देर बोलने वाली चीजें ओके वॉट दे आर आर्ग्यूइंग वॉट दे आर गिविंग ओरली दैट वुड बी योर रिबटल वॉट इज रिटर्न इन दी मेमो इज एक्चुअली वॉट यू नीड टू पुट इट इन योर आर्ग्यूमेंट्स it goes for both the teams okay then these are certain tips which you need to understand repeat your opening add a little bit more detail which is the facts uh, this is what substance that i said that it should include facts it should include case law so this is something in repetition then transition to second point it is very important that you need to transit to the second point or that is the second issue okay then finally it is the conclusion last para of each sub issue it is very important after each sub issue i am not saying issue issue ke baad to you have to conclude but after every sub issue also you need to conclude you need to put a summary of your contention this is what i am saying okay this is not a relief but you think of it as a relief what you will be saying in the prayer 
this is also another very uh, important point that you need to understand if you see one minute is remaining stop whatever you are doing even if you are arguing a case if you are putting up a case leave it directly skip to the conclusion even if it means that your 80 percent of the portion of argument is left don't worry just conclude it because judge would only then keep in mind whatever you have spoken along with the conclusion okay if your time has ex, uh, like time has finished then just ask uh, that my time has expired but may i briefly conclude and trust me judges would allow you to conclude and then conclude briefly now this is a very important thing uh, this is also very funny that i find there was this one guy he said that sir my time has expired but may i briefly conclude i said okay go, go ahead and conclude and he went on for two three minutes to conclude so i had to stop him in between and i had to ask him to just sit down so this thing is not what you should do you should briefly conclude it even if you have been given extra time briefly conclude it then comes your prayer prayer should be included towards the end now a very important thing is people tend to forget to recite their prayer every person need to read out the prayer if you are not reading out your prayer and if a person is like me sitting i would not let you win trust me i would not let you win why because prayer is something very important prayer is actually your everything of your memorial you're not claiming what relief you are asking so that is why prayer needs to be recited the format is specific i don't need to mention all of it you need to put all your reliefs into it then comes your rebuttal rebuttal is something which you need to which you are well versed with it should be one to two minutes it should be short and it is advisable that you only take it up for one minute because judges may ask you questions also okay this was something now uh, when we come to the cases now your argument should come with cases now keep these pointers in mind i would not be explaining them because they are self explanatory it says make your arguments inclusive of relevant and landmark judgments take the landmark judgments only if you find them cases should be of high court or supreme court preferably district court ke cases mat utha ke lana district court ke cases koi nahi manta until and unless they are very important or your case is in a district court okay but nowadays moot courts are coming specifically for high courts or supreme court even if your case is in district court supreme court or high court ke authority lao koi bhi mana nahi karega okay so this is very important district court ke cases you should not include and keep this thing in mind avoid foreign cases do not include foreign cases in your argument do not include foreign cases in your memorial until and unless they talk about important law point important law point means means uh, that a particular law point has been derived from that foreign case and it is very important to put it up so until and unless that is the scene don't include it try to include the arguments of the cases in your memorial now this is a tip also that i gave you real cases these are the cases that i'm talking about real cases in real cases ke jo arguments hain include that arguments in your memorial or arguments okay speak only the relevant part of the case don't go on and speak everything now this is very important for questioning judges would grill you sometimes they can grill you on the facts of the case that you are referring so you should know the facts of the case brief facts okay be up to date with the respect of cases even if you have not included certain case in your memorial or argument and you need to be know, you need to understand it keep in mind while you are presenting your argument so these are just basic things that explain your case out loud in simple terms you should not be over your voice but you should be clear you should be concise you should be uh, giving out your argument with clarity focus on making positive points for your side and don't rant if you are going off topic slightly come back to the topic only focus on positive points then one or two piece of paper these mean sorry this means that keep a pointer with you keep your pointers i would be talking about one point i would be talking about two point with a paper at your disposal near your disposal it should be very simple if you make it colorful highlighting and everything to wahan pe dikhne mein bahut difficult hoga at the time when you are standing on the podium it is very difficult to even understand a small thing which is written on the paper okay now this is very important this is a conversation not a speech so 
in a speech what you do is you go at one length without variation but this is a conversation vary your pitch okay if you are emphasizing something very important emphasize with your voice okay like what i'm doing right now modulate your voice you are going at a normal pace but you if you want the judge to listen to a particular fact go slow for example i am highlighting this this particular thing and it was mentioned in particular case a b c so you see when you are going slow the judge would actually look up okay there is a voice modulation so this is something that you need to practice voice modulation is very important then varying of your pitch is very important don't go loud all the time don't go slow all the, all the time make a balance now this is very important anticipate questions on the weak points if you have any weak point in your argument ask your team members ask your researcher what are the weak points and practice on them because that are the weak points from where you would be getting questions from where you would be grilled okay these are very important thing what to bring up with you big font bullet points you need to uh, write that for your pointers don't write it in full sentences these are something uh, just basic thing that you can keep in mind i will send out the ppt also now comes your presentation of the arguments the procedural part of it okay so we would be discussing about court etiquettes i would not go into details of it court etiquettes are something which you all know about it i'm not going to be dress code how you need to stand and everything i would only talk about the important part which is first judges can and will interrupt you at all. never ever think that judges would not ask you a question okay so if a judge begins to speak or you are at certain she is about to stop do not talk over a judge this is very important even if he is speaking for for 2 minutes don't worry let your time go to waste but do not talk over a judge just nod your head have a little bit smile make him understand that you are listening to what he is saying to be honest although you are not listening although you are not understanding leave it just nod whatever he is saying just nod make him think that you are understanding him once he stops then you start again okay judges can often be belligerent not often they are 110 times belligerent they are testing your ability to remain poised you see they will grill you even if you are right they will grill you don't lose your calm remain poised remain at your point what you are saying even if you are wrong remain standing there remain saying this sir i still think this is the thing i still think this is this thing. okay your honor your leadership is something you need you know how uh, you need to address the judges you can also say sir ma'am that is uh, something lenient which not many of you need to understand respect to your opponent yes this is something you need to be polite you should not fight with them i've seen people fighting in the moot court rooms okay fighting and even abusing so you should just refrain from them uh, that do not accuse that he is lying do not attack personally these these are just certain things that you need to keep in mind how you need to stand at the podium this is something you need to stand up straight be steady and uh, some gesturing is acceptable now this is very important sometimes people ask to me that when we are using our hands a lot uh, is it distracting or not so yes if you are all the time using it it is distracting so keep your hands this way keep your hands folded keep them on the podium and once in a while you can use gestures do not point now this is very important do not point to the opposite counsel do not point to the judge pointing is not allowed gesturing is allowed okay gesturing up to an extent and these are very important thing uh, you need to speak clearly slowly now eye contact is very important and uh, when a particular judge uh, between a sentence okay so on a particular judge you need to maintain your eye contact between a sentence or two and you need to keep on shifting this eye contact never ever just make an eye contact with one particular judge keep on shifting it to all the judges and whenever a judge uh, is asking a question look at him when he is asking just look at him in his eyes but when you are answering a question look at all the judges okay this is very important thing opening and conclusion should be memorized conclusion means your prayer opening means your introductory things they need to be memorized you should not look down never ever read a prayer you need to learn it by heart this is very important thing that is why i am saying never look down when you are reading a prayer okay so then this is the manner of presentation as i said that how the moot court and trial advocacy is different 
so everyone knows about this particular thing how moot court goes i think trial advocacy is something different so trial advocacy has the opening statements then cross examination and closing statements this is something which uh, you know i would not be discussing it further if you want a separate webinar on trial advocacy i can do that so this was something bail application the uh, sample bail application i can show you if time permits or otherwise i will send it out uh, these are very important thing how to present the arguments you need to be confident and speak with clarity this i said before also if you are diverting get back to the track because this is something very uh, obvious sometimes it happens with me also you divert from the topic okay what you are trying to point out you go off track from it but slightly get back on the track slightly means without letting the judge know that you went off track okay don't over emphasize on any particular aspect matlab ek particular topic ka picha chhod do ठीक है बिल्कुल पीछा छोड़ दो उसके पीछे मत पड़े रहो अगर वो नहीं समझ आ रहा है जज को लीव इट इफ यू हैव पॉइंटेड आउट वन थिंग कि सर ए ने बी का मर्डर किया है दैट्स इट इफ ही इज नॉट गेटिंग इट दैट हिट दैट्स हिज प्रॉब्लम डोंट ओवर एम्फसाइज इट पुट एन एम्फसिस ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर एस्पेक्ट गिव वन और टू केस लॉस दैट्स इट बट उसके पीछे मत पड़े रहो बिकॉज़ यू हैव अ लॉट टू डिस्कस एंड इफ यू फील अ पर्टिकुलर पार्ट इज नो लोंगर रिलेवेंट दिस नो लोंगर रिलेवेंट इज व्हाट आई हैव मेंशनड कि अगर कोई ऐसा केस लॉ हैज बीन रिसाइटेड बाय द एपेलेंट व्हिच इज नो लोंगर रिलेवेंट फॉर यू स्किप इट एंटायरली ओके डोंट जस्ट स्पीक फॉर द सेक ऑफ स्पीकिंग इट और इट इज रिटन इन द मेमो समटाइम्स आई हैव सीन दैट देयर इज अ 20 पेज मेमो ऑफ रिस्पोंडेंट एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ व्हाट एपेलेंट स्पोक द देयर आर फोर इश्यूज इन 20 पेजेस एंड नाउ दे हैव टू ओनली आर्ग्यू ऑन टू बिकॉज़ द टू ऑफ देम हैव बीन डिस्क्रेडिटेड एट ऑल सो यस दे डिड आर्ग्यू ऑन द टू एंड दे इवन इमर्ज एज द विनर so don't worry about it creatively present your arguments be volatile now this is very important you need to be creative because you don't know what happens there okay you don't know what the appellant would be saying so you need to be creative be on the spot the most important point of moot courts is actually the grilling grilling that is done by the judges so you need to answer questions first and the foremost thing you need to understand the question that the judge is asking so listen to the uh, question very clearly and never say i'll answer the la that later part in my argument or my co counsel will answer that never do that whatever you want to say say it even if your answer is wrong just say it don't worry but don't skip the question okay then uh, answer the question directly and then circle back to your outlined argument because very important thing is people tend to forget to get back on the argument if you are saying a particular thing judge will ask you a question in between so he would want to break your flow but answer that question in 1 minute or 2 minute if he is grilling you more try to get back on the argument try to take him uh, in the sense that sir i am answering your question by the way of this particular case and cite the case and get back on the argument because this is what your uh, judge would be seeing every time begin your answer with yes or no whenever it is possible because he is going to ask you a question answer him with yes or no and then give out the reason okay don't be evasive know what you can concede and don't be afraid to do so if you don't know the answer clearly say i'm sorry sir i don't know the answer don't be over confident don't be uh, be uh, knowledgeable at in, in every sense because you are not so that is why the judges are testing your limits of your argument because they would every person has a limit and if they find your limit accept it nicely and then come back to the argument then uh, time constraints because you are under time constraints so you need to keep that in mind you cannot go on answering the questions of the judges okay try to make transitions back to your argument you it the transitions they should not look like you have abruptly jumped up okay they need to be in connection with the question so this is one thing and uh, the trick that i said as i understand your question and then restate the question this buys you time to think of an answer this is a very important trick that i uh, have myself done reiterate the question because reiterating the question will make the question go over in your mind and you can actually frame the answers okay so this was actually the end of the presentation now we are just left with two slides this is the most important slide that we are doing that is the do's and don'ts so do's and don'ts are actually what i would want to be put out everywhere in the law schools these are the mistakes that people do okay 
so first i will be discussing about do's you need to look confident i'm not saying you need to be confident every person in the mood court room even the judge is nervous at some point even right now i'm delivering this webinar i am nervous but i'm making myself look confident even though i'm not confident but i'm making myself look confident this is very important thing how you can make yourself look confident by your body language by your gestures by your way of talking so you need to hide your nervousness you need to hide your fear next is don't deviate from your topic this is what i mentioned previously also and i would be emphasizing it again and again your topic is something you you should not be deviating from stand firm with your answer even if it is wrong if your judge is grilling you let him grill don't deviate from your answer even if you are wrong accept it okay sir i accept it or if you think that you can prove that this particular thing is correct even though you know it is wrong do not uh, deviate okay so actually second and third things are uh, to be read together maintain good eye contact this is very important eye contact is very very essential then keep on shifting eye contact do not keep eye contact only at one judge because it would be creepy if that judge is a lady judge or of an opposite gender don't just keep your eye contact there that would be really creepy and that would creep the judge a lot and one thing that you need to keep in mind this is look at your pointers whenever you're talking when you're arguing don't just keep on staring at one of the judges look down also look at your pointers break the eye contact because when you break the eye contact it is very casual and it is very actually elegant that you're making the eye contact again okay so when you are looking at the pointers you are breaking the eye contact but whenever you are making the eye contact with the judge again the judge is also impressed okay he got me back right so this is very important and one thing you need to keep in mind when you are making an eye contact with the judge sometimes judge would not look away that is the hint for you to for you to look away for you to look down or you you to look the uh, look towards the other judge because the judge is giving you hints that it is enough you are looking at me from very long you are making eye contact with me very long so this is very important people don't think about it but you need to keep that in mind and that will come as per your practice okay practice is this this practice is what you can do in front of the mirror because in the mirror you can see your your reflection as the judge so make an eye contact with your reflection and then keep on looking down the last point of do's counter the opposing counsel even before rebuttal i would say it n number of times i would say it again and again everywhere i go i say this thing only don't wait for the rebuttals counter during the arguments only then now we come to the don'ts never read from the memorial this is one thing that i hate the most and all the judges hate the most they will straight away give you zero if you are reading from the memorial because whatever you have written in the memorial we have already read it your memorial is also with us so what you are doing is you are just wasting our time but you are actually wasting your 15 minutes because you are reading from the memorial it's not another book that you are doing doing okay now second is argue with the judge never argue with the judge because judge they are sitting in a position where it will not take this thing from you okay this is just plain blunt i don't want to explain on this also because it's self explanatory start your argument with uh, countering the opposite team this is very important start your argument how you have thought to start it how you have written it in the memorial with the introduction with the fact with the law and then get in between the countering thing okay don't just start away i've seen people coming up uh, your ladyship the opposite team have said this and this in their in their memorial and i want to counter it this looks really bad because you're starting at the negative note okay don't start in the negative note in the mood courts don't be casual you need to be professional we are not your friends when we are sitting on the podium or on the bench sometimes people tend to become casual they say certain things so that is not okay have a flexible or casual body language you don't have to be flexible at all make a poise that you need to maintain throughout your arguments maintain eye contact throughout the arguments don't maintain eye contact throughout the argument keep on shifting this is what i said that you need to shift eye contacts you need to look down just counter and present your points or arguments too to don't just counter okay you need to present your arguments also if you are only countering that is making your case only wrong now these are certain tips and strategies that i would uh, say to you 
this is the first thing that I, I mentioned. All the team members must make the memorial and arguments together. You should not divide the work. That researcher will only make the memorial because that is not good. All the three people need to be work need to work as a team. Practice the arguments together and put up question to each other before stepping into the courtroom as a team because you are three members. Practice the arguments on each other and let the others put up question. The researcher, in fact, comes up with great question because he is the one who is analyzing everything. Even the uh, opposite counsel, he can put up questions which you would. Preparing the arguments, look in the loopholes, look between the lines of your argument and find what question can be put up. Think as a judge would think. Think if I would be judging a person on this particular uh, argument, what would be the questions that I would be putting up? Be thorough with your referred case laws. There's no point of leniency when you are referring case laws. Be thorough with it. Read all the case laws and learning it or mugging, mugging up is up to you. How you, you would retain it, that is up to you. If you want to write it and retain it, if you have read it and retain it, that is up to you. Read as many cases as you can as they will help you formulate arguments. I'm saying reading. Don't write as many cases as you can. Read, write concise form of cases. Then uh, read as many as you can and if you ask me so certain amount of cases that should be there in memorial it should not be minimum there should be 30 35 and it should not be more than 40. so around 30 to 40 is a good amount of case law that can be there use arguments from real case laws. this is what i am telling you as a tip i have done it i have emerged as the winner and even this is one of the greatest thing that you can do if you are doing it it's great know the essentials of the section by heart very important thing people tend to forget it because this is something what we did during the research part or decoding the proposition you need to know the essentials do not read from the memorial or any notes again emphasizing it i have written it in bold never ever read from anything quote cases from compendium or memorial and read out the excerpt very important thing is to refer to memorial if you are not referring to memorial if you are simply uh, citing your arguments we will not give you marks refer to the your memorials refer to other parties memorial let interact with the judges make judges also do something they're just sitting there this is marking no ask them to open your memorial that is very very important thing and judges like to do that 10 point is something which you need to learn only by practice you cannot learn it over a webinar you cannot learn it over one or two hours of session Try to find the loopholes in the mood proposition and use for your own advantage. Now, why these loopholes exist, I would tell you. The, uh, all the mood propositions are based on some or the other real cases. One cases or two or three cases. And it is not possible, it is not practical to include everything in the mood proposition itself. So, sometimes you don't include everything. So, there exists some loopholes. There come certain things which forms a loophole and you need to find them and you need to use them for your advantage. Counter the memorial and arguments of the opposing counsel. Again, I've said it. Be vigilant and listen to the opposing counsel's argument because if you listen to them, then only you will be able to counter. So with this, I'm done with the uh, webinar, the tips and strategies I've laid down. And I said that the international moot courts, everything that I've discussed goes straight in hand with international moot courts also apart from one thing here and there and uh, for that I can take a separate session. So this was something uh, on the fundamentals and the mastering the art of moot court. With this I am officially uh, done with the session and I am open for any questions, suggestions and everything. This current episode, the full length, will be available on YouTube and also you will be able to find the latest updates about the session as well on Instagram and other platforms as well. So do like, share and subscribe to our channel on YouTube and also follow our Instagram page with regard to regular updates as well.